Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are in the brand new tier 5 premium battleship for the Germans, the Prinz Eitel Frederick. And let's get this party started. Now, the the Hipper, or Hipper is the captain that I use in this particular ship just due to the fact that this ship is not a brawler per se. It's not a terrible in my brawling situation, don't get me wrong, but the problem is you tend to get set on fire a lot, whether you've used in the, uh, the brawler build or the um, dispersion build like we are here. You're going to get set on fire a lot, and you're going to see that in the match coming up as well. But with Hipper, and uh, I've tried with Hyde as well. I just prefer Hipper because you actually get to hit the target more often. Um, you lose out on the extra heals, but honestly... Most of the time, it's not going to do you any good. Um, just due to the fact that the ship isn't a bad ship. It really isn't. But it really thrives on being able to outmaneuver the enemy uh, at range and be able to lay good good shots at distance. Or at least that's what I've been able to do with it uh, when I've had the most success. Uh, anyway, so we've got Andrew Cunningham and Robert Jajard here. We've got Hipper. We have Flammable Cannoneer, Gyrating Drill Bits, Marksmanship, and Emergency Specialist. And then we have Will to Rebuild uh, for the extra heal, uh, or extra amount of healing. Now, if we go to the ship itself, we have Aiming Systems Mod 1, and we have Steering Gears Mod 2. Um, this really helps when it comes to turning the ship. Uh, we have, uh, currently we have the credits booster on there, but we didn't have that on during the match. And then we've got our uh, community contributor flag and the camo that comes with it. Uh, it's got 52,300 hit points with a 27% torpedo damage reduction, which isn't bad considering this is a battle cruiser. Uh, that's pretty pretty decent torpedo reduction. And the armor on this thing is actually surprisingly good too for a battle cruiser. But if I will show you the weakness as soon as I get a chance. My, uh, eight, artillery. We have 350 millimeter main batteries. We got eight of them. Two tur or two gun turrets. Four two at the front, two at the rear, and they reach out to 17.7 kilometers with this build. Reload, 28 seconds. Uh, turn time for the turrets are 34.6, so not great, but not terrible. Um, HE shells, 4,000, 27% chance to set on fire. Maximum AP shell damage is 11,340. Secondaries, it's got quite a few. And uh, you'll see that they're actually pretty good in this as well. And they uh, do set plenty of fires. But uh, maneuverability is kind of what this ship is all about. It's got an 11.9 second rudder shift, which is great for a battleship slash battlecruiser. Turning circle is not the greatest, but I think that has more to do with its actual speed than it does the, the failure to turn. Because the ship actually doesn't turn too bad. It's just once you're up to 40 or 20, yeah, 40 knots. Right. Once you're up to 40 knots. Once you're up 26, 27 knots. And remember, that's knocked down because of our uh, our crew skill. So the maneuverability is actually faster than this without that uh, particular skill, which I think is gyrating drill bits. Concealment is pretty good for a battleship, 13.4 kilometers with an 11.2 by air. And uh, the detectability while firing in smoke isn't too bad, 12 kilometers. Uh, it's not amazing, but you can get away with firing from the smoke as long as there's nothing within that 12 kilometers. Uh, it's above average maximum movement speed, especially for its tier. Um, for its tier, I think it's right there with, uh, what is it, the French battleships and the... Um, Crap. That's the word I'm thinking of, guys. Help me. Help. Crap. The French battleships for sure. There's another one that I'm, I'm missing. Oh, the, the battle, battle cruisers slash whatever for the uh, Japanese. They're usually pretty quick as well. Uh, so keep that in mind. Secondary reach is above average, which stands to reason for the... Uh, the secondaries on this thing it, it is very good you can see all the casemate guns right there on the side of the ship um, but the accuracy of this thing is better than most german battleships even with the hide build uh, so you don't necessarily need to run the dispersion build but for me it's just more consistent and you know what i mean uh, or you know what i like about consistency 
The Brawler build has gotten me in trouble too much because once you close inside 10 kilometers, the ship starts to get kind of squishy, uh, especially if people get your sides. So definitely not preferable, especially Byron's. Compromising it. High caliber AP shells may overpin the armor, but may still arm. So that shows you the the armor. It's uh, not gonna it's not gonna allow too many shells to pass through it. So you're gonna get citadeled if you give up the broadside of this ship. And one of the weaknesses that I've already seen, just like most of German battleships, uh, if you're at uh, probably right here at this angle, and you receive a shell. Uh, right here in front of the torpedo belt you can actually be citadel through this angle right here uh, that's the one weakness that i've i've been exploited on a couple times where uh, people have been able to get that shot right in past the torpedo belt and just citadel me uh, getting one or two citadels and just takes all of your health so all of the bow tanking you've done up to that point which this thing is very good at bow tanking uh, so use that whenever possible but uh, yeah, it's it's not a bad not a bad ship so far. So hopefully you guys are going to enjoy it. A uh, Mackinson class battle cruiser laid down during World War One. She had powerful vertical armor, which was characteristic of German battleships of the period. Her main battery consisted of eight 350 millimeter guns. She entered service in 1914, and there were four ships built. So without further ado, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so we are going to be on straight, and we're going to be top tier. Just how it works out sometimes. And we're going to show off uh, with Hipper as the commander just how accurate these guns can be and how good they are at range, surprisingly. Um, now, I will say this. I've played multiple games in this thing already this morning, and uh, it's kind of... It's good at medium range long range but once you get inside of uh let's just call it eight kilometers once you get inside eight kilometers bad things start happening to you um secondaries tear the ship up you get set on fire a lot uh, now this is where i say that we find out that we can actually use the smoke to our advantage Uh, again, this is just one of those first matches that I actually got to use this ship, and everything kind of worked out in my favor until it didn't. So we'll go over some of the mistakes that I make later on as well. But, yeah, initially, I'm just going to sit here. They give me a smoke uh, to hide in, and now we have uh, Prince Itel Frederick out there. We go ahead and shoot broadside on. Notice we're not given a flat broadside. That shows the decent firing angles that you get. It's not amazing, but it's pretty good. And we get four overpins and two actual penetrations on them. So pretty good opening salvo, 10,000 damage. Hey, look, another Prince I tell. Everybody must be liking this ship so far. Or at least they're in it. But uh, that's the way it goes with new ships. Anyway, we've got three seconds left. Just as we get loaded, we go ahead and fire the guns again. You can see the angles that we're firing at. It's actually a pretty pretty good firing angle on this ship. You don't have to give a flat broadside, as that guy just found out when he got citadeled. Uh, and we only hit him with two shells there. So uh, it's a shame we didn't citadel the first guy. But here I get ready to shoot him. I'm trying to get the shot. Unfortunately, he goes behind the island. I can't get a good, good clear shot at him. But we have the... Uh, I'm not even going to say it. It's the Pior Veliki, or Veliki. Somebody will have to let me know. Uh, I haven't actually done my video on that ship yet. Uh, just haven't got around to it. I have played a few matches in it. I just haven't got around to actually making the meet the for that that ship yet. But uh, as you can see, it can take a hit just nicely. It's not amazing, but you give a broadside, you're going to get caught eventually. But we're going to be kind of aggressive here. We have the numbers and anytime I have numbers well usually I, I'm aggressive anyway but when we have numbers I'm definitely going to be more aggressive because generally speaking it works out in my favor now the the leaky is sitting here shooting at me so we turn in and as you can see we just bounce around off the side no big deal 
I may have gotten a penetration on us, but it's not it's not too bad. This ship is actually surprisingly tanky for a battle cruiser. It's it's got really decent armor. Um, I haven't had any any issues when I'm using the ship correctly of being citadel. It's just when I get too close and they get those firing angles like I showed you at the beginning. Now here we got a good shot at a Fuso, and wait for it. Ow. <laughs> Half his health now belongs to me. Yeah, that was that was a pretty nasty opening salvo on the Fuso. He found out pretty quick just how unlucky he was. Now, notice what the enemy's doing here. They're all starting to turn around and come back. They also have a destroyer out here. I believe it's an Icarus, but uh, yeah. The fact that all these guys are pushing around and coming back means I should have stopped right here. Right at the edge of the island, poke my nose out, shoot at people as I get time. But I get a little greedy here, and uh, I'm going to keep pushing out. My team is already starting to backpedal, which annoys the crap out of me, because we still have the advantage if they just push. But uh, here, I'm going for the Fuso. I have a feeling that I can get rid of him. So I try to pull out, I give him the full salvo, and we get a pretty solid hit on him. Not quite as good as I was hoping, uh, and he's still alive. And now I'm in a pickle. Not as much of a pickle as the guy ahead of me is, who's given up his entire ship to be shot. But still in a pickle because their team is turning around to deal with us. They've got a destroyer here. You can see there's ma maximum amount of destroyers that you can get in a match pretty much. There's freaking eight of them or seven of them in this match. Four of them against us, of course. And uh, we've got plenty of people shooting at it, or to shoot at, and they're all broadside on, which is preferable. And you can see right there, good good deflection, showing the armor there. Because we're not giving a flat broadside, it's difficult for these guys to get good penetrations. However, the closer I get, the harder it is to maintain those angles. And now we've got the Veliki over behind us. I cannot stop yawning. What is it with me recording that I have to start yawning immediately after I record? Anyway, so we've got the Veliki over there, so we take a shot at him because he's the most dangerous to us at the moment. We've got to try to dodge the torpedoes, which in this ship isn't that difficult due to the fact that it's pretty pretty maneuverable. And then, unfortunately, this uh, Prince Itel in front of us is going to be pushing up on us, and we, we need to turn out to avoid giving him too much of our broadside and you can see he's going broadside to our team so I take a shot at the broadside guy and unfortunately that's one of the few shots where I just I take a shot and I get screwed and now we're on fire twice due to the secondaries being between two uh, Fredericks gives you a lot of chances to be set on fire and right there I actually use my damage control prematurely and that's going to cost me but once again, you see we have torpedoes in the water and we're able to outmaneuver the torpedoes. This ship is pretty maneuverable for a battleship. Uh, and then here's another shot at a broadside Frederick and he's gonna punish us. He gets so many penetrations. It wasn't Citadels, but he did so many penetrations there and we derped a couple rounds into the water. And remember, this is the dispersion build. So it's still got some of that German accuracy problems, but it's not as bad, it's not as pronounced as, say, the uh, Gneisenau, the uh, Tirpitz, and the Bismarck. It's more along the lines of the Scharnhorst, where the Scharnhorst seems to be a lot more accurate than the others. And, of course, this is with the dispersion build. It can get better or worse. And, unfortunately, we have played around and got ourselves into too much trouble, and uh, we're not long for this world. But down goes the Frederick, and unfortunately we're about to follow him because we're burning to death because we misused one of our uh, our damage controls. It's just the way it goes. Uh, I should have saved the damage control. I was in between two battleships with secondaries blazing. That's on me. Uh, but I think that was a pretty good showcase of what the ship is capable of as far as the armor of the ship when you're not flat broadside, obviously. Um, and then the ability to take the hits and dish them back and then use the speed and mobility to outrun torpedoes and turn away when needed. But I think distance is going to be your friend in this ship. It's going to be one of those those ships where the closer you get, the more of a disadvantage you put yourself in. 
and I'm not saying stay at 17 kilometers and shoot from out there, but maybe stay in that 12 to 15 kilometer range, you know, or 10 to 15 kilometers. Because once you get below 10 kilometers, your secondaries are amazing, don't get me wrong. Um, but the ship is very vulnerable to being set on fire, even with a uh, tank build, or maybe I've just been unlucky. But even with the, the hide commander that I have maxed out at 16, uh, I was getting set on fire regularly with this ship in secondary battery range. So keep that in mind. And uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed. I'm going to go ahead and try to skip ahead a little bit. Maybe speed this up because you guys don't want to sit here and watch my team fumble this away. By the way, they're going to fumble it away. We have the lead. All we have to do is not throw it away. And uh, this Normandy is going to throw it away. He's going to come out here and beach himself in front of these guys. Knowing there's a destroyer there, knowing there's a Normandy against him, and then he's going to eat a bunch of torpedoes in a minute. <laughs> it's just, it's not preferable. The team threw this match away after I died. And again, that just goes to prove that I shouldn't have put myself in a position to get killed like that. Uh, being between two of the same ship that I am in and getting pounded from both sides, secondaries, it just, it was a bad play. And then, of course, I took the really massive damage from the one guy as I gave up the broadside of my ship. Uh, assuming that I was going to kill him, and then I fumbled that away, and he, he managed to take advantage of it. But, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, speed this up. All right, so as you can see, top of the leaderboard, we did the best we could. We made a couple mistakes there that probably cost us that match, but uh, yeah. Anyway, my final thoughts on this ship is it's a pretty good ship. I think most people are probably going to enjoy it. I think those of you who enjoy the rush or the the German battleships as they are are really going to enjoy this ship because it gives you even better accuracy uh, than most of the others. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button. Leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.